Hey, hello, and welcome to JP's Product Pick of the Week. I'm John Park, here for Adafruit Industries, and guess what? This is a brand new show, and in it, I'm going to try to spend the next 12 or so minutes talking to you about an exciting new project, uh, product, something that I uh, have recently started using, and... Uh, if you didn't know, we are celebrating our 50 stemmas. So this is going to be stemma focused. You can tell by the sign there and my little pegboard of stemma boards and stemma QT goodness. Um, and uh, then we'll get to the product of the week, the pick that I have that is one of the stemmas. In fact, it's the one that's missing from right here, and I'll show you why in a second. Did I mention we've got 50 sensor boards out at this point? Uh, and so we are... Uh, excited about this, we have actually more than 50 out, I believe, including displays, uh, displays and sensors and, and other accessories. Uh, and in fact, you may be wondering, what is uh, this Stemma business all about? Stemma is a uh, plug and play system for boards and accessories that makes it easy to attach uh, microcontrollers to accessories such as sensors, motors, lights, and particularly I2C sensors, but we don't discriminate. So we actually have three pin connectors for things that are a little, a little simpler, like NeoPixels and buttons and uh, potentiometers or knobs, relays, things like that. Uh, and those use a three pin JST PH connector. And then we also allow you to use the four pin I2C devices that are uh, typically associated with the seed grove line and there's also the gravity line from DH robot. Uh, those use a four pin DH uh, or uh, JST PH connector. But then we also are uh, integrating the quick system using our Stemma QT connectors. And I'll show you all of these in a second, but Stemma QT sounds like QT. These are the little ones, also four pin. Uh, and those allow us to connect up I squared C devices. So we have power, ground, uh, data, and clock without doing a whole bunch of plugging in of separate lines. Instead, we can just plug a couple cables into the two devices and off we go. Um, so one of the things about Stemma is that it's actually compatible with all those other systems. So those systems are similar in a lot of ways, but some might allow you to use only three volts, some five volt. We have level shifting and voltage regulation, so we can use all of those things. This is a typical connection between a uh, device uh, such as a, uh, a little Adafruit sensor there at the bottom uh, and a microcontroller, which I've got the example here of the Pi Gamer uh, or, or Pi Badge rather, similar setup. Uh, so the Stemma QT connector at the bottom there that has the ground power data and clock line. Uh, and in fact, let me show you a real one. What we've got here are a few different connectors. So this is one of the larger ones. This is the JST PH. This is the JST SH. This is one cable that allows us to connect uh, sort of full sized plugs to smaller sized boards. So we've got uh, things like this four pin JST to uh, alligator clips. Pull that out of the bag there. Uh, and that's really convenient for hooking up between, let's say, a sensor and a board such as a um, Circuit Playground Express that has allig alligator clip pads on it. Uh, here is a sort of standard three pin to three pin connector. And uh, we have boards that allow you to connect into things like NeoPixels with that. Uh, here's our little, one well, of my little favorites. Uh, this is the little JST SH sized, uh, and this is what, what SparkFun uh, dubbed the quick system and uh, what we call the uh, Stemma QT that uses I squared C over these four cables uh, with these teeny little connectors. Let's go and grab something from the case of goodies here. Head over here. And what do we have in the drawer of magical product items? But hey, what's this? Oh. Hey now, why it's Lego compatible? How is that possible? Hey, it's the BMP280 pressure sensor. All right, this is a very cool one. Let's, uh, let's bring this over to the workstation here and I will show this off to you. All right, so I've got it right here. This is, uh, I'm gonna set it on the overhead so you can see it close up here. This is my product pick of the week. This is the BMP280 sensor. This is a 
uh, pressure and temperature sensor from Bosch. And uh, you'll see here we have the sensor itself and then some circuitry that allows us to use it with I squared C as well as SPI. Uh, we have a couple of little Stemma QT connectors there to allow us to plug that into a microcontroller. Uh, and one thing you'll notice is that a lot of these boards have multiple of these connectors, and that's because you can hook up multiple I squared C devices or multiple Stemma and Stemma QT devices or mix and match uh, onto a single microcontroller. And thanks to the way I squared C works, we get um, uh, essentially daisy chaining so that we can have a lot of different devices plugged in, which makes it a really handy modular system. For example, if I have a microcontroller and then my pressure sensor and then I want a screen, uh, we can plug in separate uh, Stemma devices to do that. At the bottom here, here, you'll see we still have the standard sort of pin headers, but this is really one of the magical things about this system is that I don't need to solder on pins. I don't need to plug into breadboards to connect up. I can instead just plug in my lovely little Stemma QT cable there. Same as the quick cable from SparkFun. Uh, and then that can be plugged into a microcontroller board such as a uh, Pi badge that I have here or another uh, Stemma QT device if I'm stringing them together. Uh, in the case of the Pi badge, this one's a little larger, so we used the larger connector. We didn't bother with the teeny one. And that's why we have things like our um, adapter cables that go between the two systems. So let me connect that up. Uh, so you'll see here I've got this. This is the larger size, Stemma 4 pin. It says I squared C right there. You also notice we've got a cute little Lego add-on here. This is something the Ruiz brothers made uh, as a way to have fun with our little Stemma boards. And we can plug those into uh, Lego uh, plates and bricks. Okay, so that's it. That's all the connecting you need to do rather than dealing with these pin headers and these uh, feather connector pins that we have here. So that's now connected and ready to go. Before I jump into a demo of that, I thought it would be nice to hear uh, a little bit about this uh, particular sensor from Lady Ada herself. It's in the park time, Lady Ada. Here it is. Do, 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 do. Okay. All right. This week, you have a sensor. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with the BMP280. This is that barometric pressure and temperature sensor from Bosch. So Bosch is well known for the BMP085, the BMP180, and the BMP183. And there's a lot of them. And uh, they finally kind of made up their minds and made the BMP280, which combines the BMP180 and the 183. The 180 is I2C only, and the 183 was SPI only. They finally figured out where the BMP280 is now both I squared C and SPI. It has the same precision temperature sensor. I think it's a couple degrees C, one or two degrees C um, centigrade um, uh, accuracy. And the barometric pressure is one of the best barometric pressure sensors. It can do like a quarter meter to a meter um, altitude accuracy. So you can wire it up uh, pretty easily. We um, have a level shifter and three volt regulator on there so you can wire it up to your Arduino or anything else. We got a library, we got a tutorial. This is kind of it. I think that this is, you know, if you're looking to do a barometric pressure sensor like this, you should probably get this one because this is the newest and, and the best from Bosch. I've noticed you like the Bosch. Bosch. They're pretty good. Bosch. 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 They're good. They yeah. make, they make good sensors. Yeah. Next up, it's a respin, the BMP280. We've, this is an oldie but goodie. It's a well-known, trusted barometric pressure sensor from Bosch. People have loved this for a very long time. Works great. You get uh, temperature and barometric pressure. And um, we now have it in Stemma QT format. So it's the same pinout as before. It's physically a little bit different sized, but now it's plug and play. So you can use our Stemma QT cables to chain this to say your I2C potentiometer or to you know, some other I2C device. Um, and of course, we still have code for both Arduino and CircuitPython slash Python for this uh, well-established chip. So let's say uh, you want to find out more about this. Uh, first thing you'll do is head to the product page. You can pick one up here for $9.95. Uh, it's product 2651. Uh, and you can get there either through uh, searching, go to Adafruit and, and uh, type that uh, BMP280, you'll find it. 
pretty easily. You can also go to the URL shortener. It's adafru.it slash, and then the product number, in this case, 2651. That'll take you right to it. So if we look at this, we can see we have a link down here in technical details to the data sheet, PCB CAD files, fritzing object, as well as the product tutorial. And we usually have a little learn guide or two down here that shows how to use the device. So if I click on this data sheets, uh, that'll take me to the last page of the guide. And you'll see here, we've got the schematic for the board. We also have the uh, mechanical drawing. If you're doing any kind of um, enclosure or fabrication, drilling out holes, that'll show you the spacing and size. And if I click on this data sheet, this will show me the Bosch data, se data sheet, BMP280. You'll see here we have some key stats about it, pressure range that it's available, 300 to 1100 hectopascals. It talks about the package, temperature, uh, precision, and so on, temperature range that it's safe in. This is the, I think this is the interesting part for me. This is typical applications. So what is the sensor meant for? That's, that's often an interesting thing to look up when you say, okay, what can I do with this thing? You might or I might think of an obvious thing, but I might miss something else that's really uh, obvious to other people and not me. One of them I, I sort of did some research on because I was curious, it says enhancement to GPS navigation. Well, it turns out GPS systems are only accurate to within about 10 meters uh, altitude. So this BMP280 actually has a accuracy of uh, roughly one meter of altitude, so it's, it's quite a bit more accurate than GPS, so it can be an enhancement to a GPS system, or it can just replace a GPS if you're only using it for uh, altitude. Uh, it also can be used for indoor navigation, so as you know, things like GPS that track satellites may not work very well inside of a building with obs uh, obstruction of signal, but the uh, BMP280 pressure sensor uh, doesn't have that problem. So it can be used for things like elevators. If you need to know what floor an elevator is on, if you need to know how high up something that's being hoisted is by a crane, um, it can work for uh, a lot of different cases where the only thing you care about is the altitude roughly. We're not gonna get an exact, you know, centimeter or millimeter accuracy with this thing, but a meter of height will pretty much tell you what floor something is on. Uh, of course, it can be used for things like weather forecasting, there are healthcare applications. Uh, I wanted to uh, actually try it out in, in a uh, semi-real world situation here besides just looking at it and being impressed by what my atmospheric pressure was. So uh, I built a little demo and let me, let me get into that with you now. First of all, let me bring up Moo. Now, uh, what I did to set this up was head on over to uh, CircuitPython.org, downloaded the libraries, and I'll have the Adafruit BMP280 library on my board. If you look at my code here, you'll see first we're grabbing a few libraries, including time, so we can do some delays, uh, board, so that we have pin definitions, PyBadger, which is a sort of convenience library that takes care of things like printing serial to the screen, uh, using buttons, makes it very easy to do those things. And then the all important Adafruit BMP280 library that allows us to use the board's uh, pressure and temperature sensing, as well as there's some um, uh, work that the board can do for conversions for you. Here we have setting up the I squared C bus. Then I'm bringing on this, this BMP280 sensor with the Adafruit BMP280 object on I squared C. Uh, I'm also setting the sea level pressure here to roughly my local uh, sea level pressure, and that's how altitude is, is gauged. I have some modes which I'm using when I want to look at things other than pressure. I'll show you those in a second. And then I'm filling the NeoPixels on there. Uh, and then the rest of my code is just about changing the mode based on which button I'm pressing. Uh, or adjusting the NeoPixel color based on the pressure. So if you look here in my overhead, uh, when I press up, I get a little beep and uh, my altitude is shown. I'm at 155, roughly meters above sea level. If I press the right button, I get my temperature sensing and uh, that's 28 degrees centigrade right now in here. And then if I hit the bottom button, I go back to my pressure. Now, in order to do a little uh, sort of real-world demo, I decided to use something like a Tupperware container. So these, when you close them, uh, sort of the original premise of, of the Tupperware container was you push the lid down and you squeeze out some air, which forms a partial seal or a partial vacuum. So what I'm going to do is close this up, and you'll see that when I first press down on it, in fact, let's go to a full screen. You'll see here through that scratchy lid, as I push down, I go from 994 
96, 8, 9, 1,000. So you can see I've, I've increased the pressure in there just by squeezing uh, since it's sealed. And I'm also changing the color of the NeoPixels. Now the interesting thing is if I push down enough to squeeze out a little air and then release, it actually goes and creates a suction. So 9, it's actually, oh, there, the suction was released. Let me do that again. 970, and I've got red NeoPixels there. So that's actually lower than my atmospheric pressure because I squoze out some air. And you can see this is losing that seal pretty quickly, which indicates that it's either time to replace these or maybe use some, some food safe um, uh, lubricant sealing around the edges. Even some water would increase that, that seal there. So I thought that was really kind of a fun way to, to demonstrate how that worked. And one of our community members created a really beautiful uh, demonstration that I'd like to show you as well. Here is David Glaudet, or David Glaudet, who's created a uh, balloon demonstration. So he's put the BMP-280 inside of a balloon, managed to seal it off well enough uh, with the USB cable in there for power. Uh, has a feather in there as well. Impressive, fitting all that in there. And now when the pressure goes uh, positive, he actually has it going red when he's, when he's squeezing on it. Uh, and here's an even better demo at night, which is really quite beautiful. Great demo, thank you so much. And uh, David also put the code up online on uh, GitHub, so you can download the code for that and try that out. All right, well, let's see. I think that covers it. There is our product pick of the week. It is this lovely BMP280 pressure sensor. There's the product ID there if you wanna go get yourself one. And I will uh, be hanging that up on the pegboard there and we'll move on to a new product next week. As I hang up the first in our series of Stemma, like we said, we're celebrating the Stemma 50. Uh, we've got actually more than 50 sensors now. Uh, so why don't you go check them out? So for Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park. This has been JP's product pick of the week, and I will see you next week. Thanks so much.